Peace and blessings, family. Dr. Aisha Sekou, CEO and founder of Street Corner Resources. Why are we here? We are here to stand, not just here, but to stand through the duration, through the storm with Kamala Harris for president. We can see it, we feel it, and we are standing, yes, yes. I'm here for my, my niece. I'm here for my mother. I'm here for my grandmother. I'm here for my cousins. I'm here for the little brothers and the little sisters that may not be able to be here. And I want you all to tell everybody that every vote counts. Black women rule. We're going to make this country a democracy, whether they like it or not. <laughs> and why are you walking with us? Black woman, because I'm a human being, because I believe in truth, and I believe in Kamala Harris. Okay. You are out here to support our new president, Miss Harris. We're not going to say Miss Harris, President Harris. Yes. Hello. President Harris, I like that. I would say I'm out here because I just want to make sure that the orange man does not get re-elected and back in the office. Don't drown in that excitement because there's a lot of work ahead and we got to get this work done. We got to get in play and get in place in time to mobilize and get our community out for that November 5th election. Welcome to Inside New York. I am so honored and delighted to have on today's program as part of our special series, The Power of the Vote and the Road to Win in 2024, the New York State Senator from Harlem, 30th District, I might add, with us today. And she's going to talk about the Harlem Black women for Kamala Harris. There's a lot of people, and it's great, they're taking buses and they're going to Pennsylvania, but please know that New York State is a battleground state. Yes. We're you. fighting for New York. We're fighting for New York. We are fighting for New York. And right. we need help up in the Hudson Valley. We have five seats that we can flip and one to hold. So we want to hold on to that one seat and we want to fight for those other five. And we're going to tell you more as we go along how you can do that. I'm so glad she could join us today to talk about the next steps, why this election is so important and how you can get involved. So, Senator Claire, welcome to Inside New York. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joan. I really appreciate you. And I'm grateful for you giving me this platform to be on Inside New York. Um, this election, every election is important. Every single election, especially the local ones. But this one, this one is incredibly significant um, and very different and very exciting. And we should all make sure that we're a part of it. I'm very excited at the thought of having a woman for president. And I, I have watched Vice President Harris. Um, she has been phenomenal uh, in terms of her resume, her qualifications. I believe she's ready and this is her time. And this is the time uh, for her to come into her own. And I want her to know, as, as, as well as many women in the community wanted her to know, that we are here for her, that we stand with her, and we support her in this very uh, different time. Yes. Well, I'm thrilled that you have a chance to talk a little bit about her because, you know, it's been four years that she's been the vice president uh, alongside Biden. Uh, Joe Biden, I should say. I started to say Biden-Harris because we've mm -hmm. been saying that now for months. Yes. Um, but uh, I know you could share maybe a little bit more about why it's so exciting for her to be the, pre I believe it's called the presumptive yes. Democratic nominee because we have the yes. convention coming up. Mm -hmm. Um you know, why is it so important and how did you react initially when you heard that she was being endorsed by Joe Biden? It is so important because, number one, uh, we have never had a woman president, a woman for president. And we know that women's voices are so important at the table. 
Um, we want her to bring those issues that she's been standing up for as former chair of the Women's Committee in the New York State Senate. I've worked on issues related to women's reproductive rights. We have just seen the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Uh, Kamala Harris knows how important it is. Vice President Harris knows how important it is for those rights to be protected, for uh, resources and services to be available for women. And we want to make, we just, we, we're happy that this is someone who understands this part of us and will be at the table. The other thing that's exciting to me is uh, just as we were wondering about the presidency, some of us were, um, we definitely want someone that we think uh, we are able to communicate with, that we're going to be able to work with. Uh, that is is going to be able to be responsive to us. Um, and we think we have that in, in, in Kamala. We uh, definitely want to, her to know that we're here and we're waiting uh, to help her get across the finish line, but not just getting across the finish line. We want to help her lead. We want to help her shape policy. We want to sh help her uh uh, disseminate resources uh, and, 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 and funding to the issues that are important to us here in New York and across the country. Yes. Well, getting back to the importance of this vote, and as you said, you know, every election is important, but there's been such a emphasis on how starkly important this is because you know, we really have at stake the future of our democracy. And it's been mentioned that Donald Trump is representing an existential threat. Now, you know, we as activists and concerned citizens, we stress that all the time, but to the everyday person on the street, you know, I'm sure they're all saying, Ah, they say that every election. And really what is gonna determine who wins is being able to get those people that are maybe thinking of sitting it out for a variety of reasons to the polls. That's gonna make the difference. So right. why, as a black person in particular, um, can you express the significance of what's at stake between yes. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Yeah, it is always important that we participate, number one, so that people know that our voice counts and our voice matters and that we're here. If we're not voting, then there's no reason uh, to respond in some people's minds to us. So number one, it is always, always important that we are represented with, with our vote. Um, and why it's so important, we don't want anybody to take us backwards. We want someone who can take us into the future. And I believe that is Kamala Harris. Uh, we don't need someone uh, telling us what we can teach in our schools or not to teach the things that we want to teach that we need to teach to our children in schools. Uh, we need someone who is gonna be in tune again, like I said before, with our needs. We cannot afford to sit down. We can't afford to sit back. Listen. Are we entirely happy with anyone who represents us? Maybe not. Maybe we don't get all the things all the time, but you have to put people in place that will give you most of those things and give you the, op the opportunity to work with them to get the other things that you're trying to get. Because what does it come down to? It comes down to, we know she, she's presumed to be the president of everyone in the United States. There's a lot of interest here. There's a lot of uh, people's uh, ideas that are out there. We need someone who is going to come as close as possible to the things that we need. And not only that, uh, where we're going to really find success, not only working to get Kamala in, is we have to make sure that we get uh, the house. We have to get people in that can work with Kamala so that she can do the things that she wants to do uh, for us. So it's 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 a it's a combined layered effort, but you don't help at all by not participating. That's not the way to do it. And and the only message that sends is that people stayed home and we could have had the candidate who uh, would be most likely to help help us 
get the things that we need in our communities. Yes, it seems as though, unfortunately, Democrats, to a large extent, feel they have to vote for only the perfect choice. And if you look at the other side of the road, as we know, with a candidate has 34 felonies, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, that many swore that if he was convicted, they would not, you know, in, endorse oh. or no. vote for him. But it, you know, they they told the line. Yeah. No matter and I, what. I think the candidate himself stated in a previous election that if he were to go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone, that it's that's he's going to be the nominee. So that's that's a lot of confidence. That means that no matter what, he knew or he seems to have known that people are going to stand behind him. And our candidates need to know the same thing, that we're going to stand behind them. We're also going to let them know the things that we want changed. We're also going to govern with them. We're also not going to just elect people and leave them there. We are going to elect them and we're going to come back and we're going to have an agenda and we're going to work on that agenda. But you got to be in it. Yes. As they say, you have to be in it to win it. Yeah. Uh, definitely in this case. And to your point, as we just mentioned that everyone's looking for the perfect candidate when it comes to Democrats, there have been some rumblings, even when uh, Kamala Harris became vice president, that she wasn't progressive enough when she was prosecutor. Um, and it doesn't matter that during those times and who knows how long back that was, everybody was for law and order. Um, and her being a black woman, probably the only in, in, the, uh, in the county or the state and one of the few that she could change the system with the bat of her eyes. Well, um, I think- What do you want well, to say that? Well, simply that her job was uh, to prosecute. That's what prosecutors do. Now the laws in place are part of the problem. You can prosecute, you have to work according to the laws that you have in front of you. And uh, unfortunately, they are part of a system that is flawed. And I think across the country, definitely, in, in, even in our own state, we have been working to change those policies and change those laws. The prosecutor is guided by what's on the books. And we have to make sure that those books are even, that there's justice on every level and every level of government that exists. Uh, but when she, I cannot compare her job as a prosecutor to her job as a vice president or her job as a president, because those are all very different. Yes, and even as I believe Senator at the time, she helped to write the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act with, um, I believe it was Cory Booker, Right. And and the right are saying that she's actually a left wing extremist uh, and a radical. So, right. you know, it, I guess it always depends from what side you're looking at. But just bringing this up today, because I think there was some concerns that she was not investigating enough of the police brutality cases at that time. Part of a, and you can elaborate if you would. We know that all of these changes, all these policies, they are not, these systems took a long time to build and to dismantle them. Often we find ourselves doing it piece by piece by piece. And I think that legislators all over on every level uh, especially in our communities, have really been working hard to peel back all these layers. And mind you, as we are working towards peeling those layers, it's not like the other side isn't building more, uh, putting more on top. So as you're peeling back, you got to fight back other things. And you want the best people on the team who who recognize that, know how to help fight back some of these bad policies. A lot of the work is done in fighting back bad policies uh, and, and as you're trying to build new good ones uh, and undo uh, 
undo old bad ones. So it's 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 really like it's it's three jobs, and you you know it's like whack a mole in some cases because you're <laughs> knocking one down, and then someone's trying to put another one up, and you're trying to create something new. But this is what we know we have to do, and I think she's up for the job. Yes, and that brings us to today with the project 2025. So I think that we haven't had as much focus on that. And that really is a blueprint of what will happen in the future if Trump wins. And of course, he he just gives away his position uh, with his statements that should be very disturbing to people uh, when he states that he wants to be a dictator for the day. And then he tells Christians they'll never have to vote anymore. So if you put aside all of the other issues, I I just want people to be clear that if Trump gets in office, we're talking about basically a dictatorship where your vote and, and, and autocracy, as they call it, where your vote won't, you may not ever be able to vote again. So no matter what your issues you may have, they're not going to be addressed on any level if if this should happen. But and it's specified also with this project 2025. Do you want to share a little bit about that? All I can I can echo your words and how frightening that would be. Um and this is all the more reason that we are we should be motivated to get out here and make sure that Kamala Harris is the next president of the United States of America. Uh, We have had enough of the wall building and the dictatorship and all the other things that have been, uh, um, all the other things that have been threatened or all the other things that have been proposed. Uh, We've had enough of that. Let's get out here. Let's make sure that we get the right person in. We should be very, very afraid. I don't know why people... I, I could not imagine uh, Barack Obama or uh, or Kamala Harris. I just couldn't imagine them having 34 convictions and being allowed to even run for president of the United States. I just couldn't imagine that. And these are definitely very scary times. We know there's a different uh, playbook for us. We need to get out there and stand behind her 100%. Uh, and let's get on with this election and get on uh, with our lives. Because um, I, I, like I said before, I don't think we're ready to go backwards. Uh, we don't want to go backwards. We want to move into the future. And I think uh, Vice President Harris is the one that's going to help us do that. And Council Member Salam, Youssef Salam, talked about, you know, felons aren't even able to vote. Right. Uh, so how in the world? Is he able to run for president? Right, right. I have legislation where, you know, uh, I to. people with past uh, mm-hmm. uh, felony convictions can't have a lifetime ban against sitting, even sitting on a jury. You know, what, how, how is that, how is that possible that now you, it's okay for someone to run for, no, that's, but. We're, that's, we're not even going to see that happen because I have confidence that we are going to get out there. Uh, we're going to get out the vote. We're going to do what we have to do uh, to end all of this. And, um, you know, when you, when you speak about Council Member Salam, um, I was around at the time when he was wrongfully convicted and our soon to be president. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our, our soon to be presidential, nom- our presidential nominee, Donald Trump, who was not a candidate at the time, uh, weighed in on that by saying, bring back the death penalty, that they should be killed. And that was something that was a horrible thing to say, to take out uh, ads in, in, in newspapers to that degree, to that effect, and never to have apologized for that, even to this very day. Uh, it, it just doesn't show uh, a person with good leadership, uh, good judgment uh, that that's fair and that's about justice. So you know, uh, it it was it is good uh, that Councilmember Salam is out there fighting. He remembers the pain of those words and the pain of those ads, and he knows exactly who the person is that is running. Uh, 
Uh, so we need to be reminded of, 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 of the opinions of people uh, like him when it comes yeah. to our community. And he spoke about that at the press conference, which was so, so exhilarating to be at. I, I want you to talk about next steps because as we've discussed, uh, it, there's definitely a need to get Kamala Harris and not only Kamala Harris, but the entire ticket, you know, from Senator right. down to Congress. Mm -hmm. I want you to speak a little bit about New York specifically because you mentioned it surprisingly that it is a battleground state that there are five and I believe is a congressional seats that can be possibly flipped. Then we are going to be out here uh, for New York. We want to make sure that we win as many seats as we can. It's so important for uh, Kamala to be able to go into the presidency with people who are ready to work with her, not people who are there to uh, not cooperate or, or be barriers or uh, be unnecessarily difficult uh, and just not even trying to uh, help her lead this country into the future. We need her to be there with the support uh, of people who are ready to roll up their sleeves, who are ready to work and uh, uh, take care of the very important critical issues that we need taken care of. So I am going to focus on seats that are in New York, though I'm open to if I need to be in Pennsylvania, I will go there as well or in any other state. But right now I am working uh, with Harlem Black Women for Kamala Harris on uh, the United, on, on I'm sorry, on the uh, New, York, New York State seats. And uh, people who wanna get involved, we are putting up our website, but the state also, the state party has a website up. There's uh, New York State for Harris. They can go to the website and they can get additional information about what's happening. We're going to have some more localized effort that we are going to be announcing uh, on this coming Tuesday, the 13th. Uh, we're putting everything together and we're putting a nice schedule together. So people who want to phone bank, people who want to uh, get on buses, people who want to have fundraisers, people who want to do any number of things that are necessary for this campaign, they will uh, know exactly what we have planned and be able to participate. Well, they've raised a historic amount, and I know you're still fundraising. Yes. That is also one of the points that I have to raise because yep, you'll see yep. it on social media, even this young man said, I don't know, raising all this money, and it sounds like a lot of money, but they don't have $5 to contribute to community programs. And of course, the Black press, as you heard at your press conference, latest, okay. there's not been any dollars allocated to Black press to get out these notices about the activities, which of course we would love to do on a daily, if not weekly basis. That's a very important issue that you raise, uh, Joan, and it has been historically a problem. Uh, we must talk to the party and the campaigns about using uh, black contracts and black contractors, and and also getting the message out in the black press. Um, and and I am certainly a voice for that, along with the other women in in our coalition in our group. And we are we are fighting to make sure that that happens. That's very important. Um, we need to make sure that the Black press, the ethnic press, uh, because they're the ones who are reaching people, really. Uh, you're the voice that we listen to. You know, I, I pick up my local paper. I, that, that's where I'm. We read the other stuff, but I'm getting direction and I'm getting uh, uh, instruction and information from the very local on the ground uh, press that I'm familiar with. Uh, culturally, ethnically, those are the people that I'm listening to because I believe they're going to feed me the information in the way that I like to get it. So I, I, I'm i definitely going to be looking at that. So what you say is critical. We must get uh, folks to uh, invest in local uh, ethnic and cultural culturally familiar press. 
uh, and the black press in particular. We need to make sure that the black press gets the dollars to get the message out. Uh, so that's something that we are definitely speaking to the campaign uh, and the party about. Well, thank you so much. I, you know, congratulate you. I've thank seen you. you. Uh, involved with a number of things. I've heard nothing but wonderful, loving things Thank about you. you. So I am really honored to have you on the show. And we'd love to have you come back whenever you have something else to announce. And you can watch more of our interview because, you know, we can't show it all on a 28-minute show uh, on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. So you'll receive an alert when it's available on demand. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you so much, Senator Cordell Clare. Thank you. Thank you. As black men, we have to support the black men. And we have to protect our women. I don't care what they're in. As long as they're black, I'm with them. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's tight. Freedom, freedom, I can't move. Freedom, come be Let the world know you're here and you got Kamala's 